Hey everybody, it's Adam back again with yet another tutorial from the Army Painter. Today we're going to be exploring the new characters that we developed for a new product line that we are going to be releasing in the next few months called Game Master. Today we're going to be painting up Zerisik Ikrai, a male tiefling wizard. He's often safe in the background, conjuring theatrical spells in the air. He likes to dish out the hurt and is often reckless in his pursuit of inflicting the maximum amount of pain to his enemies, putting his friends at risk in the process. This is really going to be a fun one. You can use all of the techniques used in this adventure ready tutorial to get your Zersik or Tiefling model to a very appreciable tabletop standard. Let's take a look at the paints that we're going to be using today. So now that you have your paints, go ahead and get yourself some clean rinsing water, a wet palette. I sure like to use mine and your favorite brush and let's get started. So I began by priming the model with Color Primer Chaotic Red from the Army Painter Color Primer range. I just gave this one light coat of our Color Primer Chaotic Red because I think it's going to be the perfect starting point. There are a lot of reds in Zersik's skin tones and some of the aspects of the cape. And it's much easier to paint red with your Color Primer and start with that base coat than painting red over top of black. And we are going to be painting a lot of black on this model. So I'm gonna use an airbrush for this step of the tutorial and you can apply a very similar technique using dry brush or just regular base coating. I'm taking some of our airbrush medium, I'm applying that into the cup of my airbrush. I'm gonna take a little bit of Sturge tan, tan from the D&D Underdark paint set. And I like to mix this in about a one part airbrush medium to two parts war paints before I get started, make sure I don't get any of that dried paint inside of the cup. I have an old brush here, and I'm just gonna mix that up. Make sure you clean the brush because you don't want any of those dried bits that would end up drying up inside the bristles, uh, making its way through the airbrush because you could definitely clog it up. But the airbrush medium being a two-in-one thinner and flow improver will help. You're looking for just a nice, creamy, milky consistency like you can see here. And then in a top-down fashion, I'm just going to apply a Zenithal highlight over the skin areas. And this is a pre-highlight, right? So we've got that darker red underneath. We're really just hoping to pick out the highlights on Xerxes' face and his hands here. Very simply like that. And we're going to come over this with a brighter red to really make that red stand out and pop. Now with Succubus Red, again from the D&D Underdark paint set. I'm just gonna apply this almost as a filter over top of the areas that we previously highlighted in Sturge Tan. And you can see how much easier that succubus red now pops because we added that pre-highlight. It's very simple stuff here. Allow that some time to dry and we're gonna get back into the brushwork on this model. The majority of the cape, I want it to have a slight difference than just plain black. So I'm actually going to be adding a little bit of abyssal black to Fazer's purple. And I'm gonna be using my wet palette here to mix that up. The reason I like to use a wet palette when I'm mixing paints is that you get to keep those blends for longer. Say you're gonna be painting several more of these models or certain models with a very similar scheme. You can save those paints, it's gonna last you for couple of days if you seal it nice and tight and our wet palette allows you to do just that. I'm just going to get this paint nice and mixed up before we get ready to apply it to our model. And I'm just going to begin applying all of this mix of our Ferris Purple and Abyssal Black into the cape, the top cape portion. You can see it's a grayish purple and that's what we're going for. We want some of those purple tones to come through and the reason that I'm not painting this pure black right now is because we are going to be applying a wash in the later stages and these washes is it's not only going to help to pick out the details and add some contrast to the model but it will slightly darken the model down and if i were to start with just plain black you wouldn't get any of that effect so very carefully with very thin down paint if this takes one or two applications that's okay I'm not too worried about painting inside the lines here because if I do get some right there, for example, we're gonna be painting over that in later steps, but do your best to be neat and tidy in the base coating stage because it can save you lots of time later on. So very simply with very thin down paints, just a little bit of water mixed in 
to keep that paint running nice and smooth so we don't obscure any of the details on this model. We're going to go around all of the model and apply this mixture of Fersher's Purple and Abyssal Black. Using a similar mix of Abyssal Black, but this time with Underdark Gray, I'm going to go ahead and apply my base coat on the boots and the cape of the model. And the reason why I'm not using the same purple mixture is because I want a slight variance of hue when I'm highlighting up the models in our later stages and tutorials. So we're going essentially for two slightly different tones of black on this model. So we're just going to very carefully with thin down paints apply our underdark gray and abyssal black mix to the boots and to the cape of the model. We'll also be applying this to the hair on the model. And don't forget, be very careful when you're applying this to the facial hair because he does have a nice little mustache and goatee. It's really been an exciting process developing these characters for this new product line called Game Master. Now, everybody at HQ had their hand in developing all of these characters that we're using to help narrate the storyline of our new product line, but we also hired John Gallagher, world-renowned artist, to help us with some of the box art. So let's take a look at what he has to say about our tiefling wizard. Well, Sir Kick's an interesting case, the male tiefling wizard. Uh, keep in mind, when, when I first started playing D&D, there weren't tieflings. Uh, there weren't any kind of demi-human kind that you know, showed any sort of arcane history in terms of their lineage or anything. Like it, it was almost unheard of when I first started until we had half orcs and then half orcs and half ogres. And gradually, you know, I had dragon can and so on. But when I was designing Baldur's Gate, we didn't have uh, these options available. And it's really interesting to me that tieflings caught fire like they did and it only stands to reason that they would because they're, they're I mean visually they're quite beautiful and compelling uh to be able to you know kind of jump in on on Zerkic and and offer my particular take on this uh <laughs> kind of misguided miscreant is uh is is delightful we're just going to apply this to the shirt of our model here. This is a nice brownish red and we'll highlight up in similar tones as the other reds, but this is going to give us a slight variation to our base tone. We're also going to use this cobalt red to paint the wrapped belt, the cloth belt around our model. Just give that some time to dry. If you need to, go ahead and apply a second coat, but you shouldn't need to, as we have very good coverage because we started with that chaotic red color primer base tone. Next, we're going to apply some rigid leather to the pouch on the model here, and this little water canister, I guess, or maybe it's a potion canister. Not really sure. We're also going to use rigid leather. This is again from the Underdark paint set. We're also going to use this color to base in the stave on the model. And then with just a tiny bit of skeleton bone, very carefully, we are going to paint in the little string around this potion pouch. Now we're going to begin blocking in all of the trim on the model. And you're going to want to be very careful here not to get any of oops, a little bit too much paint on the brush there. You're going to be careful that you don't get any of this paint on the areas that we previously painted in succubus red or the areas that we blocked in in our cobalt red and our grayish black tones. So just very carefully take your time here. We're going to apply very thin coats. And again, we're playing with variations and gradations in color on this model. We've got a couple different shades of red and a couple different shades of gray black tones going on. So very carefully with very thin down paints, just take your time and apply this first coat across all of the trim on the model. Now, if you do paint outside the lines, again, you can go back and fix this up. We haven't applied a wash yet. That's why I'm saving the wash stage 
for last. So just go ahead. You might want to apply two thin coats. We are getting very good coverage because our initial base coat was chaotic red. So just very carefully apply this first base coat on all of the trim of the model. You're going to want to apply it to the trim around the cloak and of course on the sleeves of the model here. I've added a bit of orc skin to my wet palette and I'm just going to very carefully apply this to the base. Now, when you get up here close to the boots on the model, just very carefully take your time here. But otherwise, once you've traced in and you've blocked in those areas, you're just taking very thin down paints and you're going to apply this all over the cobblestones on the base of the model. Now, if you have a little bit of the Underdark Gray still on your palette or even some skeleton bone, you can go ahead and just pick out a couple of these stone pavers on the base and paint them in in those colors. Just very simply going to add some variation. Again, that seems to be the word of the day. Some variation and extra tonality to the bases to make it look a little bit different and a little bit more realistic because it's very rare that you find cobblestones where every cobblestone is in fact the same color. So I'm gonna repeat this with a little bit of skeleton bone on some of the other pavers here on the cobblestone base. And very simply, you've created a base that looks natural and you know what, pretty realistic. Just very simply, we're gonna apply this to the areas that we wanna be bronze on the model. And I like the decoration around his neck and he's got this kind of cool arm, I don't know what you call it, like an arm bracelet that I wanna also base coat in in this dwarf bronze. The head of his stave, I presume that this is made with some kind of arcane magic metal. He probably stole it from one of his dwarven buddies. Who knows, maybe they made it for him as a friend. So just very carefully base in these metallic areas with your silver dragon and your dwarf bronze. And that will be it for the base coating stage. Now that we've gone ahead and base coated the entire model, you can see I painted the rim of the base in abyssal black just to finish that off. We're going to apply a wash and this is going to add a ton of shading, depth and contrast to the model. I'm starting with brown wash and I'm gonna apply this all over the skin tones on the model and also the chosen red tones that I'd like to like this cobalt red here. I wanna apply this brown wash very thin down just a little bit of water and just we're gonna paint this right over and allow the pigments from this wash to work its way into the recesses. We're also gonna apply this over top of the pouch and this potion bottle. I think that that's what we're, we're sticking with potion bottle. That's what this is. And you can see already that the pigments are beginning to work their way into the recesses on the model, creating some real depth and contrast. So very simply apply this all over the areas that we want to be this tone of brown because we are gonna apply a darker black wash, a shadow wash to the other reds and the blacks on the model. We're gonna apply this to the hands here. If it does begin to pull too much, just take your brush and wick it away, help work its way into the recesses. And of course, we want to paint the face and we're just gonna apply a very thin down application to the face. Make sure that you allow the pigment to work its way into the recesses. You don't want it to pull up too, too much. And you will notice that it does begin to darken it down. That's okay. For just getting this adventure ready, it's okay if the colors are a little bit muted and a little bit dark, you're gonna have nice contrast and depth across the model thanks to this watching, washing step. We can pick out those highlights later in our level up tutorial. All right, and for the final step in this tutorial, we're gonna take some shadow wash and this is a darker black wash and we are going to apply this all over the rest of the areas of the model, including our gray tone capes and the red trim on the model. If it does darken it down, again, remember we are going to be working this up in another tutorial, but this is just to get this adventure ready, just to get your model ready for maybe your first dungeon party, 
your first adventure with your dungeon clan. So very carefully, we're just going to apply this all over the gray and the red trim areas of the model. You can see that the wash wants to pull its way into the recesses here, and there are some very well-developed recesses on this model, which makes it nice and easy to pick out. And you can see it almost creates a line, a shadowed line right there on those creases, which is really nice because it's going to bring out some depth and realism to the model. It's going to help this model stand out from tabletop view. So when you're sitting there, at the table playing with the dungeon and your friends, you're really gonna be able to see this model stand out in three dimension on the table. So go ahead and apply this wash all over the rest of the model. One little tip here, when you're working on larger areas like this flatter surface, the cape back here, you always I always recommend that you start from the top, work the wash into the crevices and the recesses, and then you can pull that wash down. It will begin to, to pull, and gravity will do its work. You'll find that it starts to pull right here. Let it sit for a minute, but while it's still wet, go ahead and just move it around and disperse it to other areas on the model so you don't get any pooling, clouding, or any gunky effects like that. We're just trying to shade and pick out the recesses and details on the model. I hope you enjoyed this adventure ready tutorial as much as I enjoyed painting up this model for you today. Remember that you can find all of the paints and products that we use in today's tutorial at your friendly local game store from your favorite online provider such as Amazon or at www.thearmypainter.com. Remember that the magic in miniature painting is that it can be as simple or as challenging as you'd like it to be. With the right techniques, you're sure to achieve some great results. We'll see you next time.